Hey, what is up, everybody? Hope you all are having a wonderful Tuesday evening. Back here again for uh, another Tackle Talk tonight. I'm excited about tonight. Got some new stuff in the uh, in the mail. So I have not opened it. I have not checked it out. All I did was uh, take it out of the box. It was in the box with some other stuff. So we're going to be going over uh, talking about that, telling you my thoughts on it. It's going to be 100% unbiased. But, hey, if this is your first time joining the channel, I want to thank you guys for joining in. As you guys join in, let me know that you guys can hear me good. Uh, you can see everything good. Got the lights up. Pray that we don't have no uh, issues with the internet tonight. We know we all know how that goes. But hey, if this is your first time joining the channel, thanks for joining tonight. Hopefully, you guys will find some use out of the information that we're going to be going over tonight. And uh, yeah, let's have some fun. So, so let's uh, let's check in here and see who all is in here. Ryan, uh, laughing chat, uh, laughing cat, Scott, Chad, Justin, man, thank you guys for joining in. Dale, Mike. Olin, we got Chunky in here, River, River Rider. Uh, we got a lot of people already joining in. Hey, if you guys can, <clears throat> let me know. Uh, let me know that you guys are can hear me and see me good. So we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit and let's see. Sound is good. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So what are we talking about? Um, had somebody message me a minute ago and said that they were tuning in because uh, the thumbnail intrigued them and they didn't know what the heck was going on. So got some new toys. Let's see if I can focus in right there. Some new floats from Patriot Catfishers of America. Uh, thank you very much for sending these to me. Um, I greatly appreciate it. It's something that I use a lot. And as we go through this evening, we're going to uh, talk about when, where, and kind of what advantages they have and during certain times of the year. But Patriot's Custom Floats, awesome decal. Thanks, brother. So we're going to go through this stuff and check it out. This is kind of like one of the first unboxing things that I've ever done. And, and I, I, th I like it. I like it because it's going to be 100% um, truth. Uh, I have no, no affiliation uh, with this company. And if this is something that you guys like, uh, if you guys want honest opinions on something from uh, – you know, somebody that's been around for a few years and want to, see, you know, get my opinion on it, uh, let me know. And uh, we will bring it on here and I will give you guys uh, what I believe, you know, what I think about it. So catfish and crappie. Hey, what's up, buddy? Uh, River Rat Catfishing. Thanks for joining. Got a, we got a, we got a mosquito. We've got the first mosquito of the year, folks. I, I see him. If he wasn't on one of the lights right here, I'd be smacking him with my hat. Clear view. Thanks for joining in. Catfish fever and outdoors. Man, we got a good group in here tonight. So we've got uh, some some smaller floats. Uh, this is a smaller float. Now, this is pretty interesting. So I didn't really ask him a whole lot of details about this. And I didn't tell him um, that I was going to do this. So uh, these are this is all new. All new to me. So let's get this out. So it includes uh, floats, bobber stops, beads, batteries, and this takes a 312 battery. All right. So, James, thank you for this. And let's dig in. So I didn't know that these, I truly didn't know these things lit up. Uh, I'm kind of pumped about that. If you knew that these things lit up, Leave it in the comments. If you've ever used these, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, flat, flat Rock Flatheads. Buddy, it was nice meeting you too. Um, glad you enjoyed the seminar. And uh, thanks for coming down there, buddy. Okay, so we got a couple different sizes. We've got what looks to be about 
Let's see here. Let's just measure it. So if it goes just the foam, the big one is three and a half. And if we go from top to bottom, from the very uh, top to the bottom, it looks like it's about five inches. And on this one, we've got about two and a, uh, say two, two and a quarter inches of foam and add three and a quarter inches uh, between the bottom and the top. So if you're wondering about the size, that's, that's what it is. Now, let's check some stuff out. We got, okay, each, got a little bags, baggies in here and we got some, got some bobber stops, some beads and some smaller beads. Now, if you guys have ever used uh, smaller beads or uh, floats before, you understand the concept of putting the bobber stop, the small bead, and then the bigger bead on. Uh, that makes that makes a difference, and and a lot of people don't don't know that. So, I'm gonna put those back in the bag. Now we got what we got here. So, okay, so these are kind of like the lightning bug light. I'm going to guess that's probably what it is. I don't know for sure. If you do know in the comments, let me know. But that's um, for anybody that runs lightning bugs. I love them. It's a good light. You got a piece of surgical tubing and then the light fits down inside of it on your rod. And that's kind of what they've done on the inside of this. And it's got a line snap, a quick release on it. There you go. So let's open one of these bad boys up. All right, so, hey. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty stoked about that. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that one on. I'm going to leave that one on. See if it lasts. Okay, and then... That's a smaller one. All right, so we got a bigger one here. Let's turn, it up. Let's turn this one on. All right. There you go. Now that not only glows here, but I don't know if you guys can tell, but that's glowing through the, the foam as well. So, huh. There's the screw in part. All right. So let's get down to likes and don't likes so far. I know this is quick. I just got these things in the in the mail. I love that it's it's able to light up. That's gonna be that's pretty awesome. I love that it's compact. Um it doesn't, it doesn't feel real, real bulky. I, let me see how, what the direction is that. Cause I don't even know, I don't even know how these go on the line. So let's check it here. Bobber stop, beads, sinker, lightning bug, swivel. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So I would like to have seen a different snap than this. Um, let me see if I can hold it up there. Get that baby to focus. All right, there you go. So you can see, I would have liked to have seen a actual snap snap on that. Um, but, you know, without, without trying it, I can't really say too much yet. The snaps look to be decent. Uh, they're definitely sturdy. Let's see if we can get this. I would have liked to have seen some padding. Let's see if I can get that focus. Okay, so there's no there's no padding on the inside of that that I can tell. And I'll show you what I mean here. Hold on a second. So I've got a little toolbox for anybody that has planter boards 
Um, hey, thanks for the super chat, guys. Sorry I missed you there. I was, I was kind of going on. Uh, Muddy River, Muddy River rod holders. Uh, thank you, thank you for the super chat, Olin Howard. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, having a great day, man. It's been. <laughs> I can't. I can't express. Uh, explain. Well, I can't ex explain or express it. How good it's been, and I will here shortly. But let's talk about snaps because um, or releases. They they make a there's that makes a big difference. So James, if you're watching. You know, um, this is the only, and it's not really a bad thing, but one thing I would like to see different on your snaps. Let's see if I can open this up. You know, focus right there. Inside of that, come on, baby, focus up. You can see that there is some rubber pads on the inside that grip your line um, so that it doesn't it doesn't fray your line real bad. So um, that would be the only thing that I could see that would that I could critique about it. I don't really think that's going to make a big difference, but that's the only thing I can critique about it. <clears throat> um, other than that, uh, things look Pretty sturdy. Let's see here. How oh, they got that light in there? Whew. Man, them lightning bugs are bright. If you guys don't use lightning bugs, you're missing out. Okay, so everything's sealed up inside it really good. Um, I don't think you're going to have too much issue with uh, leaking and things. The, the area where they got the swivels on... Uh, looks good and sturdy and strong, you know, which you're not going to put a whole lot of pressure on that anyway. So, yeah, awesome. Super, super excited about getting to try these things out. I love that they've already got a light uh, built into them, so I don't have to um, put glow sticks. You know, before I would just put glow sticks in the phone. Um, so, <laughs> super pumped that it's already got a light on it. Uh, let's see here. SF Outdoors. Uh, I think I, I think the float conversation that we're going to have later will absolutely, you know, open some people's eyes to how good fishing with floats can be. So let's start talking about that. I mean, I'm guessing that's what most people are here for, right? Is the uh, is the why use floats? Where to use floats? When to use floats? So we, when it comes to floats, um, let's let me put this up here real quick. When to use floats? There's a few times to use floats. One, if you are a lake fisherman, you know, if if I'm fishing for small fish. Uh, small channel cats, that sort of thing, or, you know, not really small fish in general, but in lakes per se, uh, with no current, uh, no current areas where we want our bait to move around. If you put a live bait on this, that bait can swim around and attract things almost like you're drifting without, without actually drifting. Right. <clears throat> but if you are, uh, say fishing, in a there's that mosquito in a lake with wind you can actually walk up the bank if you're you know if you're not in an area that's got a lot of people throw it out and keep your bait off the bottom or the depth that you see it is at or estimate that it's at from navionics or from just finding out how deep it is and let the wind drift your bait just like it's pushing bait naturally in your lake so that is one scenario uh, to keep in mind of when to use bait or when to use floats. The second uh, time to use floats are in rivers. Uh, for, for instance, say we are uh, anchored up and we're fishing 
a big pile. We're in a small, small river, right? And we're fishing a big old pile of, of debris and trash behind us. Or say there's a bridge pier and it's got a, you know, we've all seen them bridge piers with the wood and stuff piled up in front of us. Well, we throw our, throw our lines out, but then we can set the depth on our float. And in this case, we probably have to use a bigger, the bigger float, which I'm interested to see how much one of these will hold up. If there's anybody using the big float that knows how many ounces it will hold up, uh, drop it in the comments. Let me know. So. Let's see here. It's uh, twisted fishing TV. It's not that it's it would just slide down. It's just that it has a a higher chance or higher percentage of fraying your line uh, when it's doing it. Um, the the pads the pads on there really really help out a bunch. So we're in front of that uh, bridge pier and. We want to, there's, you know, there'll be two seam lines that come off that bridge. When the water hits it, it'll go around those trees, right? And we're, most of our baits are really concentrated in front of it. So you want to, oh, hit the wrong one. So you want to fish the side of it and you're going to throw your bait out with the, with the float on and uh, just set the depth a little off bottom and you're going to let it go down and you're going to slow it down almost like you're back drifting, uh, but you're on anchor. And you're just going to slow it down and let a little bit of line out at a time. And that bait's going to go down. It's naturally going to catch that current seam. And it's going to want to slide out and start going around to the outside. So those fish that are staged up on the outside of that wood, instead of right smack dab in the middle, the more active fish sometimes, you can get those to come out and grab that float. Um, instead of coming out to grab the baits that are on bottom. So there's another scenario. And it says the SF Outdoor says the big floats eight ounces. That's awesome. So if this one will hold eight ounces and you can go 0. 0.5 to 0. 0.8 uh, while dragging, that is, that is an absolutely um, almost perfect. So let's talk about dragging. When we're dragging baits, um, we a lot of people do do it and they don't understand. I don't want to say they don't understand, but they don't put everything together. So in the summertime, we do we we move baits a lot because the water's warmer, the fish are more active, and <clears throat> we want to understand uh, what is going on. So normally our water is going to be clear. Our currents are going to be slower and we need to get those baits away from the boat. And a good way to do that is to put a float on. So you put a float on, you set the depth and you let it go out a little bit. Now we want to try something different. Now I know this is, this is a lot uh, to do and somebody's going, somebody's liable to be like, nah, it's crazy. It, it is not, it's, there's no way it can be productive. It's just got too much variables going on. But we're going to let that go out, and it's vertical because sometimes these fish will be suspended up off the bottom, and they won't hit nothing that is dragging the bottom. So now we're going to use a float to hold our baits up off bottom behind a planter board. Okay, so we're going to let our baits go out, so it's way back behind the boat, and then and then we're going to hook a planter board onto it, and we're going to spread that out as far as well. Now, I know that sounds a little far-fetched, but this summer, whenever you guys are out there and you got fish and it won't hit dragon, especially in lakes a lot of times, um, and somebody to look at to watch is go over and check out Zach Royce. He's down on uh, the Roanoke Rapids line of lakes, which is Kerr, Gaston, and Roanoke Rapids. Check him out. He's fishing. He's a guide on uh, Gaston. And he does that very thing. He'll put a float out and then hook a planter board to it as well to get it get it out farther away from the boat. Well, uh, seventy two people in the chat, so I hope 
I hope that this means that you guys are actually uh, learning something and interested in in the conversation that we're talking about tonight. So if you are, if you like this, please remember to hit that thumbs up. Uh, that, that lets me know that uh, I'm doing the right thing and and uh, lets me know that you guys are liking the information that you're getting. So, so yeah, make sure you do that. A couple other ways that we can use floats. Um, you guys know that I love the flathead fish. So putting a live bait under a float in the summertime is, is a phenomenal way to catch flyheads. Now, how can that be? Well, let's say we're fishing industries again. Say we got a barge in front of us. Well, sometimes those barges are uh, super tight together, you know. Sometimes those barges uh, will be spread apart a little bit, okay? Now, we always put our baits smack dab in front of that barge, and that's the way we normally fish it, and we just let it be. We think of it as, you know, <clears throat> that's just good enough, and we'll fish there 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and we're gone. That's not where we're going to stop at. Uh, now we're going to take floats, and... We've got some baits laid out in front of that barge for anything that's up there. But one thing we want to remember is not all those fish are going to be up at the head of that barge, especially if there's not a lot of current or if they're active, they're going to be moving around. So two ways that we can do this. If there's a split in the barges or industry or whatever you're fishing that will allow you to place a bait or a float right there where that's at, precisely cast right there where that split's at, and then let the current or let the wind push that bait down alongside that barge or down alongside that industry that you're fishing. Now you are moving a bait while anchored, okay? And anybody that was in uh, at, at the Catfish Conference this weekend, you heard me talk a lot about letting the fish tell you what, what they wanted. And by allowing ourselves to put more than one situation in the scenario uh, at one time that cuts our learning curve or our ability to narrow down that puzzle so much quicker. So now we're floating a bait down through there and we can let it go with the current as fast as it's going, or we can slow it down a little bit. As long as that, that bait is not swinging up into the water column, it is being productive. Okay. So we got one going through the middle now, any industry, if you got current or anything, is going to sweep around just like that small river. But now we can put that thing in that current and we can let it go way down the side of that barge. Um, I have at times sit for a whole 30 minutes and just foot by foot let a float float down the side of a barge. Um, and then it gets down through there. And like I said, now, you, you know, this can be live or cut bait. But live works really good for flatheads doing this. That bluegill or shad or whatever you're using is like it's feeding right there along the barge. You know, they got a lot of algae, a lot of insects right there along the barge. And it's just a natural presentation that you're allowing that fish to see. And, but your bait looks injured compared to the rest of the bait that might be in the area. Your bait's going to be flipping sideways. Your bait's going to be swimming in circles. Um, it's going to look like it's hurt which is going to then the process of just being God's creation is going to kick in and that fish is going to want to eat that injured bait fish. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I'm going to, I'm going to check chat here real quick. If you're just joining, I want to thank you guys for joining today. Um, like I've said a couple weeks ago, I'm going to start doing this more often as much as I possibly can. And I'm really, really, really going to go in depth on a lot of detail. And this is, uh, this is one of them. I want to do a lot of product reviews. So if you guys are watching and you have something that you want me to uh, check out, like we've done the convector bump and reel before, uh, you know, let me know. Um, and as long as, as I can uh, get it and we can test it out, I'm going to give you guys my honest, unbiased opinion on it. So let's see here. When using the wind, can you clip a balloon to the line with the clip on the top of the bobber, it will catch the wind better. That mosquito got me. I don't know if you guys seen him. Um, yes, so SF Outdoors, you can. And for the longest time, uh, 
I don't well, I don't want to get into this too much because stay to the end because I got a I got a really, 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 really good super tip for you guys when using floats that that's gonna open some eyes and blow some minds. But so stay to the end for that last one. I'm not gonna give it up yet. I just about did, but using balloons is a great thing. Um, the only thing that that I noticed in years past was we would lose a balloon and there would be a balloon floating down the river or in a body of water. And, you know, I just hated that there might be something come through and eat it, um, you know, and, and die because of it. So, so balloons are, are good. Um, you know, I know a lot of people use them. They work great, but that's, that's my take on it. Uh, but definitely, you know, if, if you're out there and you got some balloons, try them, you know. Hi, Tower. Thanks for joining in, buddy. Bobcat Outdoors. Uh, thanks for joining. Muskrat, Swamp Donkey. Man, there's a lot of people in the chat tonight. I want to thank you guys for joining. Uh, You know, let me know where you guys are from too. So I got a lot of new people in here that I don't know. Would love to get to know you guys. And uh, yeah, you know, let me know where you guys are from. <laughs> poor duck. That poor duck. Oh goodness. Oh, you guys are great. You guys are great. Hey, if uh, if you guys got went to the catfish conference this weekend and you watched, uh, you know, you got the chance to watch the seminar, whether it was on catfish conf or at the catfish conference in person or online, um, uh, through Facebook, let me know, uh, what you thought of it. Uh, that was, uh, a good seminar. I really like, I really liked doing it. And uh, hopefully you guys took a lot out of it too. What line, uh, do you do better between, braid and mono and what pound and why do you like over the other okay so uh what line do we use um for me for me it's mono um i love mono uh the reason i like mono is you know you you can just lay it right in your clip uh you know normally and you don't have too much issue so uh for anybody that's never used a clip for like planter boards or like this let's see we got the orange line you got the clip and i'm gonna use a red clip so you guys can see it better so we got the red clip and your line just fits in it like so okay and then depending on the clip uh this red one this red one has a nipple focus in there buddy it ain't gonna focus but there's a nipple inside so if you got the line behind the nipple, it won't come out. It stays in there solid. But if you put the line in front of the nipple, it slips out. Okay, and that's why it's called a quick re uh, a release. So, depending on the release that you have, will depend on how how much pressure it takes uh, for that line to come out. Some, like this orange one, it doesn't have a nipple in it, and it's a lighter release than the red for me okay so both of those have pads on them and there may be a reason that he doesn't put uh doesn't have the pads on these ones so that's solid that is definitely solid there's a nipple in there okay so this one's got a nipple so we're gonna put it in front of the nipple So on this clip, it has to go behind the nipple. Um, I want to try that again so I'm so I can make sure. I'm gonna put that one up there so that I can so that I'll see that question next. So let's let's try that again. Okay. So with With this one, and it makes sense. I mean, um, you don't want to lose the float, but 
the whenever you put the line on this black clip, it's got to go behind behind the nipple so that it will stay on there. Okay. I would like to see, you know, one one way that you could do this is you could put a a regular uh, snap there and then use this as your depth set. So I could use a I could use a regular quick release and let my line down to where I wanted it and then reel it up to the depth so that I don't have to use a bobber stop and that this would be my this would be my depth or my stop kind of like I do with my planter boards uh, whenever I'm dead sticking with planter boards drifting backwards. So that's that. So uh, Brian to answer your question, I like monofilament over braid because I only have to stick it in there once. A lot of times, you know, with uh, mono, mono holds good. Uh, with braid, where it's smaller, then a lot of times you will have to wrap it or make a loop. Kind of like, kind of like that, um, you know, almost where it would be wrapping in there twice so that it would hold good. Uh, you can still use braid. Nothing against using braid. It's what you prefer. It's um, personal preference. Uh, for me, if I'm on the river, I'm using 50 pound, uh, 50 pound monofilament. And you guys know, I really like the the slime line. This is the orange. I just picked this up at the Catfish Conference. Um, if I go to somewhere where I'm going to be doing a lot of channel catfishing, then I take that down, you know, and I match the size of fish that I'm after. So if I am uh, after, say, one, two, three pound channel cats, I may use, you know, 15, 20 pound line um, and smaller reels and smaller uh, rods and you know, all the, everything that matches it. And with that being said, you know, you'd have to match the float. Um, but I believe, I truly believe that these are going to work good. Uh, for SF Outdoors, if you know how much the small float holds, if if I'm going to guess if the big float holds up eight ounces, I'm going to guess this small float probably going to hold up four or five. But let me know, um, let me know if you've uh, tested it out. Uh, Green Machine, thanks for joining us. Uh, three plus one outdoors, thanks for joining in. Uh, Clearview, buddy, uh, it was nice seeing you this weekend. Hope everything is um, is well. I'll be praying for uh, for you and the family. Okay, so about four ounces on this small one. Thank you. Let's see here. So let's check this out. What's the best cork to use channel cat fishing in the wind? with punch bait that doesn't really get pushed by the wind. Um, thanks, an awesome show. So uh, Sun Up, Sun Down Fishing, buddy, love the name. Absolutely love the name. Um, if you're using punch bait, I'm going to guess that you're you're probably, you know, looking at a small uh, channel cap. Uh, let me know as far as the depth. If you And I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit. If you're... If you're using punch bait with small uh, for small channel cats and and shallower water or not real deep of water, you want to really you can finesse it a little bit. Uh, you know, use a small cork. And so there's a lot of times whenever I take my uh, my daughter fishing that I will use something very small and. You know, a lot of times we'll use these floats for dragging baits, but but a lot of times I will take these and use them for you know channel cat fishing, uh, just kind of like you would you know bluegill fishing. I mean, this is a two and a half inch oval float, and this is a I believe a two. I believe this is a two and a half. Yeah. So, and this is a two and a half inch, uh, just peg float. So you can take one of these and, you know, put a half ounce weight on it or whatever, throw it out there. And it's not going to get pushed around by the wind real bad, but it's still going to allow things to move. Uh, if you're fishing for channel cats in warmer temperatures, uh, definitely let your baits move around, you know, um, 
unless you're trying to keep that scent into one area. So hopefully that helped, buddy. Hey, Mike, thanks for joining in. Um, had another question. Let's see here. Got that mosquito. I don't know if I just, if you guys seen that on live, but that was like ninja cat like reflexes. I'm serious. Like, I should go try. Nope, never mind. I got him that time. I talked myself up like a big game, like I was some ninja. Let's pull this up here. So, would you ever do a guide trip but for a tournament? I would love to book a two-day full-out intense trip from catching bait and pre-fishing to competing the next day. I would, of course, pay the entry fee. Um, Bounty Hunter TV. So I I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, there's some people out there that do that. Um, I am not. I, you know, I do, the, I do academy classes which are, you know, I'm teaching you everything. If, if I am doing a tournament, my focus cannot be teaching you. Um, I'm, it's not because I don't want, you know, don't want to do that with you. It's because I, I'm a different animal. Uh, and I say that in the kindest of ways, you know, whenever, whenever I sign up for a tournament, I, I sign up for it and I am intense. I am 100%. Um, yeah, I'm coming to, I'm coming to smoke somebody's hind end. There ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. When, you know, when it comes to game day, I'm a different animal and I don't want, I don't want somebody that follows me on the channel to do something like that and not get a good experience because, uh, because of the, you know, the, the environment that they're in, you know, that's a different ball game. Uh, when you when you start putting money on the line for a tournament, it's not it's not necessarily the money either. It's uh, it it's more about just winning. You know, um, I'm very competitive and and I want to win. I want to come out. Uh, I come out swinging and I come out 100. percent So so the bounty hunter. Hopefully that answers your question. I I would love to sign you up for an academy class where I could focus on teaching you everything that you're wanting to learn. Um, but uh, but good question and but unfortunately it yeah, just. I don't, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> love this comment. Love it. Love it. Love it. So, um, kind of getting down to the end. Um, I've touched on a, a few things, uh, you know, dragging in lakes. Let's talk about that. So dragging in lakes, uh, we can we can use our smaller floats, um, and it's a good way to to get your baits away from the away or get your baits away from the boat. But let's talk about why. So I want you guys to you know um, understand why we need to get the baits away from the boat. Okay, because I think that'll help you understand you know what's going on. So. As we, you know, as the temperature warms up, fish get more active. They become more glued in with their environment of what's going on around them. You know, they're uh, <clears throat> they're not as lethargic. Uh, they're more active, and and they can they can see things better because there's more light. They can feel things better um, because there's more going. You know, the their sensitivity level is higher, and as as you come through the lake or the body of water that you're on, your, your boat's giving off vibrations. Um, depending on how deep it is, they could probably see it. Uh, so they can feel, they can hear your sonar pinging, they can hear your trolling motor, um, they can hear you making noise. If you was to drop a sinker in the bottom of your boat, you know, that's going to echo, okay? Um, so a lot of that thing's not saying that sound doesn't attract them because there are some things going on that, that, you know, say that, but as you're going through there, there's a mass amount of fish that move away from everything that go out kind of, you're almost going to split them like a V, right? So as you get through them, you want your baits out away from the boat and behind the boat so that those fish, as they move back in and start swimming around, 
will be able to pick up those baits away from the boat. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so let's go back up here. Got some. The bounty hunter, absolutely, we're running together. Um, I'm glad you understand that as well. Uh, if you're, a I mean, you've been a tournament fisherman, you know exactly, exactly uh, how that goes. Finding flatheads in lakes is tough. The cover have piles of wood. Are they good to fish, meaning coves? So, yes, yes and no. Um, whenever it comes to lakes, you have to remember, look at that. Look at that. That joker's still lit up. That is awesome. James, that's awesome, buddy. I'm going to, it's like my magic lightsaber. Whoosh. So when it comes to uh, lakes and flatheads, uh, those are definitely a different animal uh, for a couple reasons. You know, you got to think <clears throat> they don't have to eat as much. Um, they're going to definitely be taking advantage of the low light conditions, meaning um, you're, you know, the witching hour and, and the first light in the morning and in between um, the really bright full moons are going to affect those a little bit more uh, because of how clear and uh, you know, how stable that water continually stays. Right. So whenever it comes to that, what you want to do is find those areas that you want, you know, you want to, you want to fish and then you're going to place baits as close to, that as you want and you're going to leave them there uh there was here in ohio there was a gentleman that was phenomenal at, at flathead fishing he had a boat but he preferred and used that boat specifically to go out and would place baits big baits where he knew um, their home was at he would place them around it so that whenever that fish come out and decided to feed he didn't have to go very far he would come out he would grab one of those baits and he would catch him. Um, sometimes he he had to wait a long time. Sometimes he didn't. So you know it's a, it's a different animal when it comes to uh, to lake fishing. And hopefully that helped you out on that question. So does cork collar matter when using a Santee rig? And I want to answer this question. Um, you, you know, there's some things that do, and some things that that I would say no. For instance, um, if anybody's watching that uh, that knows this, you know, don't don't shoot me in the foot next time you see me. But if you're if you fish Willer much, Willer and and other places as well, uh, pink is a very 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 good collar uh, for some reason. Now, why why is that? I don't know necessarily. Um, I don't know enough about that to to really understand it. Um, I know that once, you know, once baits get to a certain depth, like say we're demon dragons, um, <clears throat> whenever I, I decided to start using demon dragons, I'd done a lot of studies on that. And if you've ever heard me speak on it, uh, you know what I'm talking about. I really researched collars and, and vibrations and what was going on, where fish could see what and, and how that will, that would affect them. And so this is a demon dragon, um, so it's got silver on the bottom. Uh, it's got some scale look to it. It's got a, a black on top, green head, red eyes. So I put these colors together, and it was after after I'd done some research. So once at a certain depth, uh, collar turns to gray. All collar turns to gray. So I thought about that, and if you have a white float that turns grayish, you know, down there at a certain depth would black show up almost brighter almost like you're shining a light on something because it's going to be uh, you know the 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 light that's coming in doesn't penetrate that far but if something's already black would it affect it would they be able to see it or pick up on it quicker or would they not so that's the reason i chose you know some some black and some darker colors some silver um I use regular green and yellow a lot. Um, they always seem to eat it. No big deal. But I do like uh, pink, um, darker colors like gray or black. 
you know, over certain other things. So I don't necessarily, I think there's something in there that, that the color make, makes a difference, but I don't have enough uh, history to say, yes, this color uh, works best this, you know, during this condition. Um, hopefully that's, that's me being honest and hopefully, hopefully that helps. <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks, Skip. Uh, it's, uh, it's shining like a diamond. It's been in the garage for a while. It needs to get out and, and do some, uh, do some fishing. Hooks and hammocks. I am glad that you're on the show tonight. Um, so don't, please don't forget to get a hold of me. Um, so that I can email you those pictures. I don't, uh, for some reason, I didn't get your message or um, I couldn't find it. But shoot me a message and let me know where to send stuff to. All right. We Remember, now stay around to the end because we have, I have one tip that everybody should try um, coming up. I'm checking through some through some comments. All righty, now this is a good question, uh, Catfish King. Um, thanks for I just dropped a float. Thanks for asking this. Um, does leader length truly matter for anchoring? So, uh, Catfish King, when it comes to leader length. Leader length means uh, is is huge. Whether you're whether you're anchor fishing, dragging, bumping, um, or even drifting. And whenever I say drifting, I'm talking about vertical drifting. You know, a lot of people, uh, a lot of times, we will take a big float or a big uh, sinker, you know, like this, and we will put it just you know real close to our our line. And a lot of times, I have seen where those fish would come up and look at a bait but you know not really be active with it and then i would change that length of the leader and get this farther away from the bait and they start biting now uh i don't think that leader length makes as big of a difference while you're vertical drifting as it does while you're uh, back bouncing um, dragging baits or anchored but definitely it makes a huge, huge difference uh, whenever it comes to those. So pay attention to that. There's some good questions tonight. And that's one of the biggest things I like about, uh, about doing seminars. Um, if you guys was at the Catfish Conference, you know, I got to do a seminar each day. Uh, it was a great opportunity um, to share some information. But I've got some great, great questions. Now, here's a great comment for some people, uh, for the guy that was talking about the uh, this earlier. You know, his lake has low visibility, and he's had, um, you know, they've got had people or had fish hit their green float. Now, I know that, I know this is a used one, and I know that it won't show up there, but there is actually teeth marks, or not, not teeth marks, but... Um, rough pad marks from a from blue cats where they have grabbed this and you know whenever they inhaled the bait so and I, and I think what that is is in my opinion whenever they come back behind it you know we'll have that uh, six eight ten inches you know behind our float or behind our demon dragon or whatever and as they come in they inhale they ingest so much whenever they come back that that actually goes in their mouth as well and then and then comes out that's, I think that's what happens whenever they, they hit the peg floats, too. <clears throat> uh, thanks, Hooks and Hammock. I'll get that to you. Uh, those pictures turned out wonderful. All right, so here you go. Another another pink believer. Uh, pink believer. You know, I always I always tell folks that uh, those pink ones are for my daughter, but... Uh, but you guys know, you guys know now. So 
Last tip. We've been on here a while. Man, awesome. We've had a uh, got a hundred and some on here right now. Thank you guys very much. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. Um, as always, you know, if this is your first time joining the channel, thank you. Love having you on here. I'm gonna be trying to do these more often, doing more in depth. Um, so if you have anything like this that you want to get a biased opinion on, you know, get with me and we will uh, we will try to figure it out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep, right there it is. It's all coming out tonight. So for you guys that have waited around till the end, I told you that there was going to be something. Uh, there was going to be a huge, huge uh, – tip for you guys now this is who this is a this is a dandy okay um i know a lot of people on here fish lock and dams and so whenever you try this i want you to be very very careful uh because in this scenario it can get dangerous uh safety is absolutely the first thing you should always do so Let's talk about this real quick. If you're fishing a lock and dam, we all know that the water flows out of the dam and down the river. But at some point in that flow, there will be a reverse current, okay, going back up to the dam. Now, at a lot of dams, you can only get so close to the dam uh, before you get a ticket, you get blowed out, they blow the horn, tell you to get out of there, um, or it's just too dangerous, right? Well, that is a lot of that is surface water, you know, under that water. It's not that bad in a, in a lot of these places. You know, a lot of these places under the water, these fish are used to it. They're swimming it uh, for anybody that's been up close to a dam. You know that these fish go right up in and even sometimes through these through these dams. So we got floats. We know an idea of how deep it is. Uh, we can pay attention to our float as it's going uh, as it's going away to know whether it is hitting bottom. You know, if it's hitting bottom, it'll drag down and pop up, drag down and pop up, right? And we know we can reset that. But we're sitting in an area at the dam where that water is flowing back to the dam. Perfect scenario to use floats, okay? If you don't take advantage of this, you're going to from now on. So you drop that float down, you let that sucker ease back to as far as you can get it back in there. And now you're fishing an area that you couldn't get to before because, because of the, the way the current was flowing by using floats. So you definitely, definitely have to try it. Uh, anytime you have a seam and this doesn't go. So I want to back up a little bit. This is not necessarily just for, um, lock and dams okay so if you're anchored and you're letting that go down a seam line at some point in time that seam line is probably going to turn and start coming back to you if you can get that float to go down that seam and then come back to you you are now fishing in two directions okay and what like we said earlier any time that you can get yourself to to put that puzzle together quicker by you know doing more than one thing at one time your your percentage goes through the roof okay so hopefully hopefully you understood that that's the last tip for the night so there we go floats um last thoughts on the patriots uh custom floats i think i'm going to enjoy them uh james thanks for sending these uh i will definitely put them to use this year i'll put them to use from the kayak i'll put them to use um, from the boat and lake and river and be able to uh you know hopefully give you guys give you guys some more info as we go go through but if you guys are uh getting ready to leave make sure you go over to muskrat adventures uh check them out check roger out tonight looks like he's going to have uh, doc lang uh, doc caught some big fish on wheeler today so he's going to have some awesome uh tips and information for you guys as always if you guys are still here and you need somebody to pray for you and and get you through a rough time i'm here would love to had two uh or a couple different folks come up to me at the catfish conference and tell me how i have inspired them uh through living through christ and what jesus uh, does for me and 
you know, they got inspired and they changed their life and it meant the world. It hit home. It really, it almost brought me to tears. Um, it was a, a lady and a gentleman, uh, two different ones. But if you guys ever need anything, if you want to, uh, you want me to sit down and talk with you, get something off your chest. Maybe there's something that you want to tell me uh, that you don't want to share with others. I'm here. And if you want somebody to show you the way, and uh, we can sit down, we'll pray together, and God will come into your heart, I promise you. And he will bless you just like he's blessed me. And I can't thank him enough for everything. Thank you guys very much for joining tonight. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this has helped. Until next week, God bless. Tight lines. And we'll catch you guys on the water. See ya.